94.7 The Wave, Greg Mack here with my friend from many years ago, Ricky Bell, uh, new edition of Bell Biv DeVoe, of a few other things probably that I haven't heard of. <laughs> right. But uh, thanks for coming by. Man, thank you for having me, Greg. It's good to see you again, bro. It's always good seeing you. And real quickly, tell everyone, you're, this is your wife sitting here. This is my lovely wife of 14 years, going on 15 years, hey. Amy Correa Bell. Hey. Say hi to people, man. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we're going to get to you because there's something real special that you're doing that I want to talk about, too. Thank but, you. But I had to go back to Ricky and I in the new edition days. Yes. Uh, I think I was working at a station in Houston when we met. I think Bill Dern was managing you at the oh, time. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then when I came to LA, uh, we did one of the first shows I did when I came to LA was with you guys mm-hmm. at a little club called Dudos wow. in Compton. And wow. you guys were the opening show. We were at a little radio station, the mm-hmm. very first ever rap radio station. <laughs> right. And the DJ was Dr. Dre. Wow. And DJ Yella. Yep. Uh, if you saw straight out of Compton, then you kind of know the scene. Yes. But you guys were there, and yep. it was so packed. Mm-hmm. And now, if I want to hang out with you, I got to, let's see, 50,000 just to say hi. <laughs> if you want a full show, 150. What's hey, <laughs> man. Man. You, know, you guys, man. That's been 30-something years in the making to get it up to those numbers, you know? But, man, we're, we're blessed, and, you know, we have some dedicated fans that we are super grateful for. They come out and support us. Whether we have a record on the radio or not, man, and we just um we're just honored that that to be still here. You know what I'm saying? There's so many artists that have come and go in that span in the last thirty years. And for us to still be here, man, it's only by the grace of God. Now see, speaking of fans, I'm glad you brought that up. Mm-hmm. Cause I was on the air this morning talking okay. about you. And I told the listeners that are waiting patiently for you to answer this question. Oh wow. Because see, you know, I'm gonna be the host for you guys' show Thursday night. Okay, nice. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna get up there and introduce you and do okay. what I do awesome. and stuff. Nice. Okay. Nice. I'm gonna have me a couple of cocktails so I can do it. There you go. <laughs> but uh I was telling the listeners because we have a wave uh suite. Okay. Where only wave listeners, you know, right. that, that when these sweet passes, as we call them, okay. are going to be able to hang out. Now, I was thinking, since you and I are friends, you know, me, Michael, <laughs> Ronnie, and I'm going to get into that Put in a minute, too. Spot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking that these people in the wave suite should be treated special because, you know, we'd like to take real good care of our wave listeners. Absolutely. And so I just kind of threw it out there that. You know, Ricky was going to make sure that you guys in the suite, either he's going to come to you or mm-hmm. you're going to go backstage. We're going to hook it up, right? Yeah, we're going to hook it up. I'm going to have all you guys come backstage. You're going to meet the rest of the guys. We're going to take some pictures and kick it. Okay, now wait a minute. Wait, which camera is he on? Look in that, look in that camera. The <laughs> Wave a, listeners listen, that want sweet tickets, so you, can see you tell eyes. them right you now. So you tell them right now. night at the show Morongo Club Vibe BBD for the Wave listeners, the special VIPs. Sweets. 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 Okay, here we go. Backstage, meet and greet special just for you guys, just for the Wave listeners. All right? You have to be a Wave listener and a BBD fan, of course. <clears throat> But you heard it from me. You can see it in my eyes. I see you guys there with Mike Cameron. Okay, I feel much better. Yeah. <laughs> I've been worried about that all day, man. I said, I know Ricky ain't gonna let me hang. You know, nah, he's not you. gonna leave me hanging I out there. You. Wait a minute, how many how many people are up there? Don't worry about way? it. Don't worry about it. I got <laughs> okay. you, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's not that many, but we wanted to treat them real nah, special. Nah, man, we um we we we're honored. We don't take that for granted. It's work, but we love it. We'll we'll start worrying when people are not coming to the meet and greets and they don't want to meet us or <laughs> hang out with us anymore. So yeah, other than yeah. that, we're good. Oh, we'll have to roll them back yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. we'll get them back there. <laughs> right right man you know what I gotta tell you uh, the new edition story yes one of the biggest biopics TV biopics in the history of TV biopics mm-hmm. what was that like how did that feel Man, well, first of all, we we had no idea that it was going to do the numbers that it did, that it was going to have that type of impact, especially on a, a younger generation who was able to see, you know, New Edition for the first time. So it felt good. I mean, just watch. I mean, we actually started the process of shopping. You know, the writing of it happened 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, there were some other deals that didn't, you know, that fell through. And I think this was the the exact time that it was supposed to happen. I think BET was the right network that it was supposed to happen on because we were able to pull together families, 
you know, and that, I don't believe that that has happened since Roots or something like that. But I mean, so it felt good. I mean, it felt good with just promoting and just seeing the impact. And now when we go to the shows, it's like we see families and little kids doing the routines and singing the song. It's, it's like we've been reintroduced all over again. It just felt like for all the hard work and everything we've been through, even being ripped off back in the day is like now you know it all it you know there's redemption and mm -hmm. all of that and so just with the movie and the numbers that it did man we're just we're just honored when surprised actually that mm -hmm. it did do so well but man it feels good yeah i i was watching the movie and i was you know sitting there with some friends and i'm like i don't remember quite happening that way right. i i knew gerald <laughs> busby i there were certain parts and then i had to remind myself because you know i'm i'm in the process of you know the big oh, movie oh nice and okay. so uh, the one word they keep giving me is well you gotta embellish a little bit yeah, embellish yeah. because your life wasn't that exciting <laughs> <laughs> right. you know and, but the thing is is you try and keep it as close to the truth as possible yeah and I think we did that I think with us I mean to be honest with you there were mm -hmm. a lot of things we wanted to have in there um, exactly but we couldn't have in there I mean it's, you, movies what I've learned is that every time you add a scene or change something you know changes the budget it changes the budget mm -hmm. you know is it going to be extras or is it going to be this location so there were certain things like say if a subject or situation happened on a on a bus we might have changed it to an office or a restaurant or something like that but mm -hmm. the actual story and the point how about everything came together it's i mean th that's our story it's what we sat down with abdul Williams and um, and Jesse Collins and shared with them. So those are personal stories and things that happened to us as a group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I noticed uh, because you know I know Michael, Michael and I would talk. I was actually on Motown the same time as Michael, mm -hmm. and so we got to you know talk. Right. Michael's like the business mind of the group. Yeah, Ronnie his cousins were on my compilation album. Uh, oh, wow. You, I don't was know it, if you, Was it his brothers, the Throwdown Twins? Throwdown Twins. There you go. That was on the, Robin and Roland. the Greg Mack album, which sold about 30,000 pieces. Thank you. <laughs> nice. That's okay. nice. That's not, well, today, that would be number one. Exactly. Right? Back then, it was like, well, Greg, we tried it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And uh, so, you know, I, I just never really gotten to talk to you. You always real standoffish. Yeah. And I didn't know uh, oh, until yeah. I was listening to your uh, wife in the uh, right. recent interview, mm -hmm. you know, about the situations that you were going through. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now when I see Bobby, and I do talk to Ralph still on right. uh, oh. Facebook, we'll chat. Right. And I see you guys, y'all all grown up now, and y'all are all so mature. I don't know how to act. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to this wild, crazy guys, man. Man, man, it's been crazy, man. But you know, like, when we came into this business, we were so young. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of our development was arrested because we just didn't grow up like normal teenagers do. We came out of school and we had to basically take responsibility for our own lives and everything just happened so fast mm -hmm. and I mean I'm just now learning that I had been that 15 year old kid probably for about 30 years of my life just yeah. as far as my mentality and emotional state was so I mean just even growing out of that and you know that what my situation what was revealed in the movie was so um during that time, it was really a devastating, dark, you know, just violent, just rough time for me mentally and spiritually and just not knowing how to deal with life, you know, being in being, uh, taking on this major responsibility of the business and taking care of my family and all of this and doing it all went away, not really knowing who I was mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I just like it was a shock to me and my way of dealing with it was dealing with drugs and, you know, and alcohol and sex and all of that was a, a coping mechanism for me mm -hmm. that I learned later. Mm -hmm. that I was just using that to cope with life because I just didn't know how, didn't, didn't want to face it but you know as you see man my lovely wife she was there with me the whole time cheering me on encouraging me helping me to believe in myself when I couldn't you know I just didn't have any hope no strength no desire to get better to get back on my feet she was there for me and, that that is the one thing between you, Bobby, Ralph, mm -hmm. uh, Ronnie, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know, I haven't met Mike's significant other, but right. the one thing that's consistent 
is the all of you have a strong woman. Yes. And that strong woman is what seems to have pulled you through and, and just made you the man that you are today. Absolutely. You know, and, and to see you working with your wife right. on this new song. Can we talk about this new song? Yes, we can. You guys did a new song. I wanted you to bring in uh, a Megan Good because she directed the video, yeah, right? Yeah, she did. She's filming in Canada right now. Yeah. She's been here. Megan, right. I, I know you'll see this, Megan. I'm a big fan. So next, <laughs> you're welcome to come by we'll anytime. Bring back, yeah, sure. we'll come yeah, back for sure. Yeah, we'll come back for sure. But uh, the song, tell everybody about the song that you guys did, because it's awesome. Man, I, I'm going to let she, my wife can explain it a whole lot. Well, I was me. working on a, an EP with my producer, Bosco, and I actually brought Ricky in to get his opinion and advice. Mm -hmm. And he, instead of giving his advice, he said, hey, wow, I want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to work with you. I want to introduce you. That's the right way because you found it. You found your niche. You got your style. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've known Ricky for 20 years, so and I've been in the music business for a very and long time. And you're still with him? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, you hear the guy talking now. That's who I've always known. So right, when right. he was going through all his stuff, I mm -hmm. held on to that guy. Like I knew who the real Ricky was. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so he said he wanted to work with us and at the time the new edition movie had just came out and we kept getting approached by people about the impact it was having. So when it came to write about the subject, we we're like, okay, you know, let's just write about where we're at right now. Why are we still together? Why are we working together now after all this time? Mm -hmm. And honestly, it was an honor to work with Ricky. His as an artist, he's just such a stellar person to work with. We all stepped our oh, game up you. for you. You're too sweet. <laughs> but. Um, Basically, like I said, the man that you hear talking, mm -hmm. there's gold there, right? There's so much wisdom, and I think that's kind of what the song is about. So we put out this EP, and we're calling it an EP because there's two versions. There's an acoustic, there's a remix, mm -hmm. and we did we started out with the acoustic just to write the song, mm -hmm. um, but it sounded so beautiful. We were like, hey, that's the song. We need to not mess with that. If we're gonna do another version, we'll remix it, but we need to let that be that. So when we recorded it, right. it just, because it was so sentimental and about what we've been through, we felt bad just like, let's, oh, just check us out, hear our new song. We're like, that just doesn't feel right. We feel like we're supposed to give this away. Mm -hmm. If it's really gold, mm -hmm. what would be the right thing to do? Right. So. We're like, how can we give back? So we researched all these nonprofit organizations and we found one called Direct Relief. Yes. And you know, we were affected by the fires recently. It was oh. blocks from our house, almost oh, no. got evacuated. Mm -hmm. um, and we have family in Puerto Rico affected by everything that went down there. So we found out Direct Relief is the number one organization at the scene of every hurricane, every natural disaster. So yes. we're like, you know what? With this specific song, we're going to give away the proceeds to direct relief so it can make an impact now. Wow. Right. Yeah. That those is are awesome. The people that are left behind right, right. in Puerto Rico, like they need to know their gold. Mm -hmm. People in Mexico need to know their gold. The people in Syria right now need to know their gold. So right. it just felt right. That was, Ricky said, this doesn't feel right to just. So the remix, yeah. of course, we're getting down on that one partying. <laughs> yeah. But the acoustics, more sentimental. It's a love song for families, for couples. You can say to your grandma. It's just about honoring and valuing the people that are in your lives because you never know. I was looking at the video, which, which you know, like I said, Megan did a great job, oh, and I was trying Megan. to figure out the end. Right. And I was asking Ricky about it, but I wanted to hear your explanation of this. Where did the police come in at the end? What is that about? Okay, so we we don't really know exactly what Ricky did. It's this big secret. Was he mafia? Was he a gangster? Did he leave the life? Uh -huh. You know, he had all that money in his trunk that he lied to me about so right. in the beginning you see us go to this hotel but then we leave and we go to another hotel so when you see the police coming they're going to the first hotel right right and we're not there so we like you know I know Ricky, Ricky was them. saying it's to make you think make you think yeah, it's it's to make you and wonder. It, it, it had me doing that I'm sitting right. here like no wait a minute did he, did he <laughs> is she underage or what are they trying to say right, <laughs> right, right. right, right, right. and we wanted to leave it up to the right. audience to decide but Megan Good is an incredible director she has so many stories and you know we wanted to leave it open for your own for interpretation more, yeah. your own interpretation yeah. and a lot of people are asking us to do more they're like are yeah. you gonna do a movie or something right like, right i don't know we didn't even know we we're gonna be acting right. in a romantic relationship exactly. together 
and, oh. and, 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 and truth and truth be told, you look more like his daughter than his wife, Ricky. I'm sorry. Oh you, you got God. a young looking wow. wife, Thank man. You. you got a young looking wife. Uh, thanks, I'll Craig. Make the girl take... feel good. Right. <laughs> I'll take it. There you go, man. Well, congratulations. We're gonna post the video up on our site along with you know this and stuff. So that everybody can check it out, you know what I'm talking about. And yeah, y'all just keep doing what you're doing. I don't know what to say. Man, just thank you for having us, man. We really it's so good to see you again. I did have one quick question because I get asked this okay. on my show all the time. What's up? Why did Belle Biv DeVoe go away from New Edition? Okay. Well, we try to um, explain it in the movie a little bit, but basically it's like this. When we were, um, there was a time when we found out our managers were stealing from us and all this other stuff and mm -hmm. we cut everyone off and mm -hmm. all we had was, it was just the four of us, Bob had already gone mm -hmm. and we had a record deal. So we're trying to put our team back together. Mm -hmm. And during this time, we were um, meeting with different managers and there was one part that I really wanted to have in the movie, but we had a meeting with Don King and Al Sharpton to be our managers, to be the new edition manager. Oh, damn, that's like a <laughs> double duo there, man. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, it, it was a hell of a meeting, too. I wish we could have put that in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but once we decided on our managers, we were like, you know, we're trying to get in touch with Ralph, and he wasn't, you know, he was just a right. no-show. Right, right. So we, we were in California. We flew to Boston to go to his house to say, hey, yo, bro, what's up, man? What's going on? We, you know, we trying to put this, you know, organization back together. And Ralph was like, man, I, you know, I'm just trying to do my own thing right now. I'm trying to, you know, I want to go solo. Mm -hmm. I want to be like Phil Collins. And mm -hmm. you have to remember at this time in New Edition, it was all about Ralph. Mm -hmm. Whenever we went on stage, mm -hmm. he got the biggest screams. He was the lead singer. Mm -hmm. So in our minds, we were thinking, damn, what are we going to do without Ralph? This, mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. he's about to leave and we're basically panicking. We're, we don't think, OK, well, let's just start our own group. Mm -hmm. That wasn't our first idea. Mm -hmm. We were panicking. So... That's when we went and got Johnny. We put Johnny in the group, and it was said, it was already said that after that Heartbreak album, Ralph was going solo, mm -hmm. and Johnny was going to continue with his solo career, and we still didn't know what we were going to do. Hmm. So just like we were at the last show, at the forum, after party, we're up in the forum club, Jimmy Jam says, why don't you guys just be your own group? Because he was asking us what we were going to do. Originally, Bell Bivens, yeah. DeVoe. <laughs> Bell Bivens and DeVoe. Right. Sounds like a law firm. Right, right, right. right. And then you took the And then we the took, and Mike, on. they would always spell his name wrong. Right, right. So he said, just call me Biv and take right. off the N and we'll go, we'll just be Bell Biv DeVoe. Wow. And it was really just about survival. It was just like, okay, well, this is what we have left, so let's make the best of it. Right. Yeah. Wow. And yep. then we hear Ricky yeah. on the love songs. Right. And, and here we go. Right. Uh, <laughs> one big family. One big family. And you guys man. still cool. Everybody's still cool. Uh, I was yeah. talking to Bobby about that. He yeah. said, oh, man, we're all good. Listen, bro, the next, the next, yeah. I'm going to just go on and put this out there right now. Mm -hmm. The next tour. Because let me, let me be honest with you, new edition. Wait a minute. World exclusive. World, World exclusive. exclusive. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. Just like you saw in the movie, the new edition story, mm -hmm. we still bump heads a lot mm -hmm. over everything mm -hmm. and the part that's that hurts the most is that from the outside our fans they want to see us together and it's like why don't y'all just get it together and it's like it hurts because you can't really explain mm -hmm. what's really going on right and so it just looks like for everybody get it together right mm -hmm. and we just can't we couldn't you know we couldn't get all six members but we got four Mm -hmm. We got Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. And so for the most of this year, as far as on stage and what you see, that's who you'll see. You'll see Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. BBD, and, 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 and that's Bobby the Brown. name of the tour. Am I correct? Absolutely. The that's name what, of the tour, everybody, <laughs> is called Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. Wow. When does that start? That's what it is. Our first show is May 18th in Atlanta. Wow. Yep, Shane Park. Come check us out. Y'all should have added like Ronnie, Ricky, Bobby, Mike, and Greg right. as the as the host. Right. <laughs> there you go. And Greg Mack. Right. There you go. Look here, man. I'm so proud of you guys. Hey, Good luck with you, that man. tour. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks again for having us. We uh, really and before it. you go, you gotta do the wave song like everybody has to do it, man. Oh, what you mean? Ninety four oh, seven. Nine, there you go. Come on, man. Ninety four seven the wave. Show him how to do it. Show me how to do it. Go ahead, go ahead, show him. 
94.7 away. She killed me, man. She killed me. Okay. Put me on the spot. We should have harmonized. I know, now. right? We'll go practice and come back. Yeah. Come on. Thank you, guys. Thanks again for having us. Appreciate it, bro.